I wanna thank Birch Living for sponsoring this video. Have you ever worked with white fabric and then this happened? How about this or even this? White fabric can make your blocks just pop but it can also be a really tricky fabric to use, even for experienced quilters. Here are 10 ways that white fabric can trip you up and some strategies to use to get the best results possible. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Hi, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you want to make. And if you like what you see, please click that subscribe button. If you don't know already, Gnome Angel and I have been hard at work designing this year's 100 Days 100 Blocks quilt, Maple and Eucalyptus. And I've had to move out of my comfort zone a bit by using a solid white fabric in the quilt. White fabric has some properties that can make it challenging to use. So let me show you some of the strategies that I use. White is technically not a color because it has no hue. If you take a wedge of the color cone, you'll find it dead center up at the top. However, finding a fabric that is pure white can be challenging because the underlying fabric that quilting cotton starts with, often called gray goods, is well, gray or brownish. So you might think that you have a white fabric, but then when you hold it against another colored fabric or in a different light, you can see an undertone to it. This sample has a yellow undertone. This one is a bit pink. This one's a bit blue. So when you are choosing a white for your project, choose it in good lighting condition, preferably daylight, and alongside some of the other fabrics that you're going to use in your project to be sure that it's the white that you want. Have you ever tried to keep a white shirt clean? Well, with white fabric, it's kind of the same. Dirt that you didn't know was even in your sewing room will find a way onto your whites. So it might be time for a wipe down. Not only does your sewing machine and your cutting table and other tools collect lint and dirt, but your rulers can get gummy and your irons can have all sorts of stuff lingering on the bottom. Dirt also comes in looking for love, so be sure to wash your hands often. And do I need to say don't eat in your sewing room? When choosing thread color, the advice is often to find a neutral that goes with all of your fabrics. Unfortunately, with white, everything can show through the fabrics, so you'll want to use a white thread and sometimes even they can be seen through the fabric. So be sure to trim your threads after every seam. Our eyes are attracted to the highest contrast in our blocks. And since white has the highest value, where it meets the lowest value fabrics is what's going to draw your attention. And that might switch the focus from where you think it should be. For example, in this block, if we use white in the inner split triangle, we have a pinwheel and we want to be sure that our seams are perfectly nested in the center. If we use white on the outside of the block, it becomes more of a diamond shape. And in your construction, you will need to make extra effort to ensure that these points are perfect. Before we move on to the next issue, let me tell you about Birch Living and the mattress that's on my bed. Birch Living is a mattress in a box company that makes mattresses and sleep products that are stylish, comfortable, and environmentally conscious. It comes rolled up in a box and is super easy to set up yourself. Their non-toxic mattresses are made right here in North America, crafted with organic and natural materials that have been sustainably sourced. This is important to me as those organic materials help keep me cool and regulate my body temperature while I sleep. And my mattress is not releasing dangerous emissions into the air as it's guaranteed free of harmful chemicals. Birch mattresses are Green Guard Gold certified. This means the mattresses are independently verified to be organic, free of harmful chemicals, and ethically produced from beginning to end. I've had mine for over a year and liked it so much that I gave one to my sister and then one to my parents. 
Ordering online can be nerve wracking and ordering for someone else even more so. With Birch, you get a hundred nights sleep trial as well as a 25 year warranty. With every order, you'll also receive two Birch Eco Rest pillows made from recycled plastic bottles. They're breathable and better for the environment. We love our Birch mattress and I think you will too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Birch. You can click on the link below or go to birchliving.com quilts to get 20% off your mattress plus two free pillows. Sometimes halfway through a project, we realize we need more white fabric and you order it and it arrives and it is clearly a different white. Same name, same manufacturer, but a tone off. You can try ordering from a different store, but a friend of mine tried this and she went to five different stores and found five different dye lots. So if this happens to you, just be strategic in your block placement. Depending on how many blocks are different, Use the blocks with the different white all in one section, either in the top or in the corners or all in one row or in a cross or just in the borders. And you know I've shown the color darker here just so you can see it online, right? I'm sure you got ahead of me here and went, duh, of course you're going to press to the dark side so that the threads don't show through the back. And that's true, you wanna do all your pressing to the dark side. But unfortunately, you can't always do that in every single block if you want them to lie flat. However, you need to take care when pressing to the light side so that you don't have a shadow. So when you have no other choice but to press to the light side, after you have sewn your seam and before you press, place your piece on the cutting mat with the white on top and the dark on the bottom, take your rotary cutter and tilt your blade on a 45 degree angle away from the ruler and trim a fraction off your seam allowance. This will catch just a little bit more of the dark fabric underneath. So you don't need to worry about that shadow. And always remember to press, don't swish. You probably thought my top is done, my problem with whites are over. But now as you make your quilt sandwich, you need to think about the color of your batting. Batting comes in a natural, a black or a white. And the batting color can affect the brightness of the finished quilt. Here is white on a natural wool and here is white on a white cotton. I'm gonna use the white cotton to keep the colors popping. Since I have purchased my long arm, I have been absolutely fascinated with the interplay between fabric color and thread color. So never just take a look at the spool and say this matches. Take a single strand and lay it out on your fabrics. And it's just not shades of white that you should be laying out on top of white. You might find that a pale yellow or a pink or even a pale green works better and always do a practice piece before you start. It's hard to see here, but this mauve is giving the best result. And don't forget about the thread on the back. This orange is peeking through and the white works much better. Do you remember my video on the stitch library? If you work with white a lot, this is a good time to start recording your choices so that you have something to refer back to. Fraying threads are the bane of many quilters that like to work not only with white, but any light colored fabrics. Before you quilt your top, be sure to do a good recon over the top of the back of the quilt to trim off all those loose dark threads behind your whites and do another check from the front as well. Now, after you quilt it, if you miss one, you might be able to sneak in through the seam allowance with a very fine crochet hook and snag that thread and pull it out. But it's so much better to take the steps to avoid this than trying to rely on this method. High contrast, white quilts look amazing. As I said before, that white and that high contrast really makes the colors pop. But these quilts are also high risk for bleeding colors, kind of similar to the pink sock effect. If you don't normally pre-wash, 
this might be the project to try it. However, even if you do pre-wash, be sure to use color catchers every time you wash your quilt. Some fabrics don't bleed on the first wash, but on the third or the fourth one. When a color bleed happens, don't put it in the dryer. Grab some Dawn or Palmolive, the ones without fragrances or additives, and squeeze a generous amount into a clean sink or bathtub and soak the bleeding quilt for several hours, sometimes overnight, then rinse. You might need to repeat this process several times until the rinse water runs clear. So my maple and eucalyptus quilt is just about ready for my trip to Panama. This is the pattern that Angie and I will be using in our Unleash Your Sampler Superpowers course that we are teaching on board. If you would like to join us, there's still time to get a head start on this year's 100 Days 100 Blocks. And the digital copy is now available to order on my website. And I'll leave a link to that in the notes below. Take care and I'll see you next time.